Did you know there's a matchmaking website for EV owners and you don't even have to be single? Uh, it's not exactly what you think and uh, the CEO of EVmatch.com, Heather Hawkrain, is going to be here to explain. So my conversation with her is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward, but the most importantly, become a part of this amazing community. All right, so uh, EVmatch.com. If you're not on there, you really should get on there. And and at first, when I heard about it, I was like, well, that's an interesting idea, but you know, um, it actually is more than just an interesting idea. This is something that I'm signing up for now for sure as I find out more about it. Um, and it's, it, see, this is the type of innovation that we wanna have in this in this space. This is kind of a Airbnb, Uber, um, you know, eBay type of an idea. So I really kind of like the combination of creativity and what, what's going on and, and the need in the community, right? So I'm gonna let Heather explain before that, of course, before I get to our interview, I want to remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Accelerate Auto. The extended of, uh, service contracts, I should never say warranties, extended service contracts for electric vehicles up to 125,000 miles, only $100 deductibles, and you can get $100 off if you use uh, the E4 electric discount code that's in the description of this video. So is the link to their website for the X Care. So check it out and let me know what you think. All right, guys, without further ado, uh, here's my conversation with Heather, the CEO evmatch.com. Heather, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. All right. All right. Well, so listen, I've, I've, I have an electric car. Uh, it's, a, it's a Tesla. Her name is Sasha. So we posted, we posted something on your uh, evmatch.com website uh, looking for a like-minded EV. Has to be low maintenance, prefer, you know, long drives on the beach. And we haven't heard back from anybody. What are we doing wrong? No. We're working on it. We'll, we'll work on finding Sasha the perfect match. Please. So uh, how does this work? Tell me. Uh, obviously, this is not a matchmaking website for owners of electric cars, right? Correct. Correct. Not yet. No. Um, so what it is, is EV Match is a peer-to-peer -peer network for electric vehicle charging. No, it's not a dating site. Um, but we are connecting people. So we are connecting EV drivers with homes and businesses who have installed EV charging stations and they want to rent those chargers out to the general public. They see an opportunity to earn a little bit of extra income and also support EV adoption by offering up their private charging infrastructure. So through our web and our mobile applications, households, so individual homeowners can actually list their private charging station, set a price and create a listing on our app. Then they can rent it out to other drivers with a few quick clicks. And we also expanded recently to business hosts so small businesses, hotels, and apartment complexes can do the same, where they they basically rent out private infrastructure through the, the mobile application. Okay, so this is kind of a cross off match.com and Uber, right? So essentially uh, uh, cutting out the middleman. Um, so if I'm traveling, uh, whether in, like, in my neighborhood or just really traveling, I can basically say, listen, I need to charge. And uh, someone who has a charger at their home and now business uh, can say, sure, come on over and I'll charge you this much. Is that is that pretty much the... Yeah, that's exactly right. So if you were traveling um, or let's say you didn't have a home charger and you just needed more reliable charging access, you can find a charger on the map that meets your needs that's near your destination or near your home, near your workplace. And then you can actually book a specific time to charge. Some of our hosts have instant booking, similar to Airbnb. So you could just instantly book a specific time um, and then you pay through the app. And we take into account the cost of electricity, also the vehicle that you're charging to ensure that the prices reflect um, the amount of electricity that's used. So do most people end up using this for long distance travel or this is something that, you know, they, they just kind of forgot to charge their car or, or they had a really long day and, and they just need a little bit of charge? Like what kind of, what, what does a typical yeah. uh, customer use this for? Yeah. So right now, most of our customers are using this on road trips. So once they arrive at their destination, they know they have a guaranteed charging spot. That's really nice, kind of that peace of mind of reservable charging. But we also have users who are kind of topping off when they have a little bit of range anxiety. So they'll charge for an hour near their workplace if they have a long commute home. 
In the future, I will say we expect that more of our customers will be renters and multi-unit dwellers who use this to charge with their neighbors in their local neighborhood. Um, and we've seen a bit of that, but we think that that customer segment is going to grow rapidly. Um, and actually we saw a lot of this with the Model 3 coming out. And so we can then serve those customers who don't have home charging with re reliable, affordable charging in their neighborhood. Oh, okay. So, so for example, if I have a charger in my home right now, but my neighbor doesn't, he can still say, hey, you know, I'm going to buy an EV. Do you mind if I'll like charge at night when you don't need to charge or you, you're gone during the day and I'll pay you this much? And it's kind of a almost an ongoing kind of a deal. Exactly. Yeah. So those types of um, charging sessions would be consistent. You would probably find a few charging hosts that you charge with on a, a weekly basis or even two or three times a week. And what we found is that most residential chargers are only used about 10 to 20% of the time. So we can actually have a few people share one charger and our service allows for that where um, neighbors can charge with neighbors and they can trade off. Um, one neighbor could charge during the day, another in the evening, or even just switching off. Um, because a lot of people don't need to charge every single day. Okay. And so which areas is this working uh, right now where people can, uh, and how much does it cost, uh, if, if anything at all? And then what's like the average uh, uh, session as, as far as cost is concerned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're currently operating in California and Colorado. We launched in Southern California. So majority of our hosts are currently in the LA, kind of greater LA, San Diego area. Um, but we will be expanding this year to the Pacific Northwest. And we are looking for partners, particularly utility partners, to help us expand across the US. In terms of um, price, so the average charging session, um, it's typically about $2 an hour, but it does vary because the host can set um, an hourly access fee. So some chargers that have kind of a higher desirability, a really nice uh, walkability, will charge a bit more um, for parking. And then in terms of charging session time, most people are charging for about two hours is, is the average session time. And how much how much does that normally cost on average? Um, so that would be $4. Okay. And uh, so the good thing is that you can reserve the spot, something you can really do with pretty much any, any charging network, including the superchargers for sure. Um, so that's that's a big plus, um, you know, obviously Absolutely. kind of a bed and breakfast is probably would have been a better example even. Um, mm -hmm. But then so because like, for example, I I would I would like to participate, but like my charger is in the garage. So how would it work? Did, will someone that pull into my garage and just chill in the car or do I have to invite him for tea? Like, <laughs> you know, how how, yeah. how does that work socially, you know? Yeah, great question. Um, so we do have quite a few hosts who have the charger in the garage and they simply run the charging cable under the garage door and they leave it in the driveway. Um, and what we've done is we've integrated with um, a company called eMotorworks. So we've integrated with the juice box, the eMotorworks juice box, which is a Wi-Fi enabled charging station. And if you're a host and you wanna install that charger, then we can guarantee access control. So that means that you can leave the cord in the driveway and no one will be able to use to activate that charger unless they use the mobile app and actually turn on the charger. Um, so that's a nice feature if you are concerned about security. But we do have a number of hosts who are simply leaving their cord in the driveway and then um, the driver only finds the address. They only receive the address after they've paid for a session. So, so that ensures that people aren't just you know, using the cord without paying for it. Okay. So uh, another thing that just came to my head is like, okay, so we're here in California and you guys your services right now expanding from California. And, you know, like every time I need to hit a nail into my wall somewhere, I got to get a permit. Every time I got to post a, like I post a flyer about a lost cat, I have to, I have to get a permit. Um, I, I probably should stop doing that because I don't even have a cat. But the point is that, you know, like how do you, so I guess there are two issues that I see with it. And tell me what the, the workaround with it is. Uh, one is, you know, if I'm providing a service uh, and the residential area to another customer for money, can a city come in and say, well, you know what, you're a business now, so you have to obey by zoning laws and get a like a business license or whatever else. Um, and secondly, you know, because it's an electricity gets exchanged, are there other regulations can jump in and kind of, uh, you know, cause trouble for this whole uh, for this whole uh, sort of a system? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, right now um, we we have not run into any challenges with municipal um, regulatory issues. But you know, as we grow, we do expect that we may need to get business licenses for our hosts. And that's something that we are very proactive about. So we're in communication with municipalities. Um, but at this point, it's really basically people are sharing access to their charging station and renting out their driveway. Um, and so there's really been no issue with that. We, it's very similar to Airbnb, where we are the broker that are connecting the two sides of the marketplace, the, the individual owners of the infrastructure and the drivers, and we serve as that platform. Yeah, I guess if there's any trouble, Airbnb would be the first one to go through this and, and this would just kind of ride the coattails. Okay, you know, yeah. fair enough. And I so will also add that one, one benefit, we are helping cities reduce their carbon emissions. And a lot of local municipalities have a climate action plan. They want to get more electric cars on the road. And they know that access to public charging is a barrier. So I think a lot of cities that we're operating in now see the benefits of EV Match, and they want to work with us to make sure that this solution is possible. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I live in Sacramento here, and this is like the capital of California where they, they want to push stuff like that. I got to tell you, I really like the idea of uh, neighbors, especially in the apartment complex, sharing it. I think that's like, that's good. That's, that's, that's got to be huge. And you also said, you know, businesses can do the same, right? So if I have a business that's obviously, let's say, closed after 6 p.m., people still can come over, you know, charge, pay me money and essentially pay for, for the electricity for my fleet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so we see a lot of opportunity with businesses when they're closed. So small coffee shops, restaurants, dentist offices, all of these um, businesses that have parking lots, that have customers during the day, and then they're um, vacant at nighttime and often in residential neighborhoods. So we see an opportunity for those businesses to install a charger, offer an amenity to their customers during business hours, and they can choose if they want to charge for electricity or not. And then they turn on EV Match in the evening hours and enable those reservable charging sessions. And then we, we manage the payment processing. Um, it allows businesses to collect uh, revenue and earn passive income when their business is closed. And that's been very appealing to the, the initial businesses we pitched to. So quick logistical question. So I'm just thinking like, I'm not, now I got, you got me thinking like, okay, so <laughs> let's say somebody reserved a spot, I say, go ahead and charge. And then, you know, somebody comes in and decide who, who did not reserve a spot sees the charger and decides to plug in and the other guy comes in and says wait a second like it's reserved so how how is that figured out since there's no mm -hmm. a digital handshake right yeah so the the driver who's made the reservation is the only one who can activate the charger at that time and so their mobile they will receive a button on their mobile app that allows them to turn on the charging session or the charging station and no other driver will be able to do that so if another driver tries to book a session at that charger at that time, they'll receive a notification that says, we're sorry, this charger is reserved. Um, but so what they if it's, be able uh, to turn on the electricity. What if it's, it's some like stranger that sees a charger and decides to pull in without even knowing that it's been reserved or it's part of, part of EV match? How would that yeah. work? Or it, this is pretty much up to the owner who will have to control the charger when it's on and when it's off. So they will not be able to initiate a charging session, that driver you described, and there would be, there would be no flow of electricity. Um, so they could plug in and try to charge, but it wouldn't work. Um, and then there would be information. So there is information on the charger that says to reserve this charging station, go to evmatch.com or download the evmatch app. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I guess even like you'll be told sign would probably do okay so i'm thinking about this okay so i also have a, a vault and and it's uh it's a lease it's about 200 dollars a month so even if i have you know a couple of people come over to my place like right now i'm not charging obviously i charged overnight um do an average session you say four or five dollars that's gonna pay f not only for my lease payment but also for all of my electricity that i use for my vault so essentially by participating in this, and if my location gets uh, relatively, you know, popular, then I can literally just have a free car. Yeah, exactly. But I, I, I feel like I'm really excited about that, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, There's you know, a lot it's of not opportunity bad. for people to um, pay back their charger, the investment in their level two charging station, to help pay their lease or their car payment, um, and to just earn some extra income. So we are super excited about this opportunity to help bring these privately owned assets into public use and incentivize 
those homeowners to make them available to the public. But yeah, you got the right idea. This can really help you pay your bills, um, particularly your car payment. All right. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so tell people uh, uh, real quick, uh, how can they sign up uh, if there's any fee for signing up? Uh, and and uh, what do they need to have besides the charger? Great. So for residential charging hosts, you can go to evmatch.com or download the app. We're in the I we have an iOS and an Android app. Um, you do not need any special equipment to be a residential charging host. You can even list a standard 110 volt outlet. Um, it literally takes five minutes to sign up. You set a price, you say where the charger is located, some, some basic specs about your charger. Um, and then we'll create a listing on EV Match and direct drivers to your station. You can choose if you want it to be instant book or approve every request. Now for drivers, and, and this is free, for residential hosts, it's free to sign up. For drivers, it's free. Um, drivers only pay when they actually book a charging session. For commercial hosts, we have three compatible charging stations. They're all Wi-Fi enabled. They range between five to $800. So the first step would be installing one of those charging stations. And then the second step would be creating an EV match listing and connecting that device to your account. Um, people who are interested can again, visit evmatch.com and look at commercial hosting as the, um, the subtopic. And then we can be reached at support at evmatch.com for specific questions about hosting. And just to be clear, you don't even have to own an EV uh, or have a charging station. If you happen to have a 240 outlet or even 110 outlet, you can still participate and make extra money. It's as easy as putting your extension cord out <laughs> into your driveway. I love that. Yes. Um, and I wanted to highlight, we're really looking for hosts near transit stations, near airports, and near downtown corridors. So if you have a business or a home in one of those areas, in Sacramento in particular, we are really trying to support um, Uber and Lyft drivers who want to drive electric vehicles. And we found that there's a lot of demand near those transit stations in the airport. That's right. Uber and Lyft, they're both actually incentivizing their drivers and uh, giving choices to the riders to be able to, you know, uh, go green. And I believe you get a little bit more, both Uber and, and mm -hmm. Lyft, especially in some test markets where, yeah, so 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 those the ride sharing services can really benefit from this. This is great. So, all right. Well, listen, I'm, I'm excited. I hope this is helpful for mm -hmm. my audience. I know it is. Um, I guess um, my car, Sasha, will have to wait until there's a real uh, a matching service to find a life mm -hmm. partner. But all right, fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Um, great. Uh, listen, uh, the, the link is going to be down below. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. I'm excited about this. Uh, and hopefully maybe we'll talk in another, you know, half a year or year or so and see where you guys are at and uh, how this evolves. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to update you on our expansion and also our commercial hosting network. Um, and thank you so much. Hope that everybody checks out evmatch.com. All right, guys. Well, I am excited about this and I will definitely do a follow up. And I am I am a client. I am going to be signing up because it is pretty useful you know as a matter of fact as the conversation went on i've learned a couple of things i didn't know before the interview and it's not because i didn't prepare it's because really it's just i i there's quite a few different nuances that that i wasn't aware anyway uh the link in the description of this video but i'm sure you can type it in anyway yourself evmatch.com um and let me know what you guys think let me know about if you would be using this as a, as the owner of the charger or as the ev owner who will be charging or both uh, maybe you'll be one of those people people who don't have an EV and just take an opportunity of your 240 or 110 outlet. I'm curious to know. Uh, let me know in the comment section, of course. Uh, and other than that, I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.